Hi, I'm Julia Heider with Additive Manufacturing Media, and I'm at PT Expo at the Westminster Tool booth with Hannah Coombs, who's the marketing manager at Westminster Tool. And we're talking about these medical tweezers. Yeah. So can you tell us about this part, Hannah? Yeah. So basically, we've been working with Mantle, a metal 3D printing company, for about three years. And we've been really wanting to uh, push the limits on their technology. Um, their metal 3D printing cavities are really designed specifically for making um, and our, mar our main market is medical so um, looking for case studies and looking for ways to test out the technology we partnered recently with Foster Corporation a uh, polymer and compounding supplier um, and with them with a really difficult material um, they provided an example surgical forcep that kind of looks similar to that um, and basically what we wanted to do is we reverse engineered the part we designed we made our own design and then we used mantles of printed cavities to mold the parts that you have here. Um, and we learned a lot from a really it being a really difficult material. Yeah, can um, you tell us more about this material, yeah. what it is, and why it's so difficult to print? Yeah, so this is a nylon. Why it's so difficult to mold. Yeah, so why it's difficult to mold is because it's a poly polyamide 11, um, and it's a highly glass-filled nylon. Um, so it's about 65% glass-filled, which means that it's really tricky to mold because it's super abrasive. You know, it comes out like concrete. Um, so it's really thick. And that means that some of the molding parameters are a little bit tighter. So you can't mold too low or else you're not gonna get you know, a uniform finish. You can't mold too high, you're gonna have defects like flash. Um, so we wanted to use Mantle's printed cavities to try and um, you know, accommodate and try and eliminate those defects. But it was also a huge learning opportunity for us. Um, so we have worked with glass-filled uh, polymers like this in the past. Um, this is definitely a little bit higher. Um, but what's unique about this material and new for us is that it's actually derived from castor beans. So it's fully recyclable, um, but it being a you know a surgical tool, it has high chemical resistance. So it's exactly the type of complex part that we would want to showcase to our potential customers. So let's talk about the mold itself. So you design the mold yep. at Westminster Tool. What is the process of designing a mold for 3D printing like? Yeah, so it's a little bit of a different perspective. I wouldn't say that it's limiting or necessarily challenging. There's a lot that still goes into design that's tradition that follows what how we would approach it traditionally. Um, so for instance, when we design venting and narrow venting, I mean, that's what we're trying to compensate for, not for typical things like flash or defects. Um, what was a little bit different is now we're designing conformal pulling into the block rather than having two separate pieces. Um, so we were able to kind of build the conformal pulling in and it was printed off of the block. So what we got from Mantle right off the printer is this block here that was 50% done. Um, and then we were able to harden it. This is an H13 equivalent. We were able to harden it through um, outside processing and then do minor operations like EDM at the top here for venting. So, um, and then we did um, some, uh, some light machining for like the ejector pins and the sub gate. Um, but we, the ratio that we use is that it was about 50% done when it, we got it back from Mantle and it took about 80 hours to get it back from them. So what was the time to create this mold from design to having you know, yeah, so it was, it was a total of about three weeks. Now, this is a hypothetical case study, so it's very conceptual. Um, so there were a lot of different considerations that were a little bit unique compared to how we would approach, say, a part that already existed or something that a customer already had on, you know, already had with them. Um, but for this one, three weeks was a big deal. I would say traditionally it might take closer to like five, six weeks, so not a huge reduction in lead time. Um, but 80 hours for a cavity is pretty great, especially considering that this was a prototyping project. You know, for Foster as our kind of hypothetical customer in this situation, they wanted to prototype the part with super high quality as fast as possible. So getting that cavity back quickly, um, and it all at the end of the day, it all depends on you know capacity in, in the tool shop, you know, like on the shop floor. Um, it could be a little bit shorter time, it could be a little bit longer, um, but you know that's something that I think is a huge benefit and really shows the viability of the technology. So like, how many parts could you? Make with this one so we actually, um, just before we came to PT Expo, um, we ended up successfully molding about 1,500 of these, but in total about 2,000 um, you know, 2, parts came off of the press. Now this was a quick turnaround project for us. Um, it's kind of hard to say how, much, how many more 
um, shops or cycles that we would be able to run through. Um, but we're really glad because we've had previous case studies, and I know Mantle's working on a lot of production production environment um, where they're using similar H13 equivalent cavities, and they're running for 800,000 cycles um, and still going without defects. So it's hard to say with this project, but I, I would say we could definitely expect um, minimal to no problems with running several more cycles down the road. So again, with this being a prototyping project, is that something that you are planning on using this mantle technology for more in the future? Yeah, so we're really actually excited to announce that we are the first ever beta printer user of Mantle. Um, so working with Mantle, we're the exclusive. Um, we're getting the machine next month, actually. So once we get the machine and we're using their pace and we're using their technology, we're really going to be able to not only explore prototyping opportunities, but production as well. Um, and this is going to be huge for our capacity. This is going to open up a ton of opportunities in the shop. And we're actively looking right now for customer partners to use this on real world examples. So yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. So we will stay tuned to see how you're able to use this machine. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.